This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. In Florida, students are expressing their concerns about gun control. And in Ohio, a seventh grader shoots himself in the school bathroom. Marvel's new movie Black Panther tops the weekend box office. Hello, this is Matador News. I'm Thomas DeJesus. And I'm Dari Hariri. Less than a week after the deadly shooting, in Florida, a 7th grade boy in Ohio brought a gun to school and shot himself inside a restroom. Jackson Township Police Chief Mark Brink says there is no concern for harm for other students. At approximately 10 minutes to 8 this morning, we had a 7th uh, grade student go into the uh, boys' bathroom and what we believe is a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was transported uh, to a local hospital. His parents have been notified. Uh, all the students within the school are safe. School officials say they don't know whether the shooting was intentional or not. The student is being treated at a hospital nearby. 100 Stoneman Douglas High School students are traveling 400 miles to Florida's capital this morning. The student want to urge lawmakers to prevent a repeat of the massacre that killed 17 students and faculty last week. My friends and I, my community and I, have stared down the barrel of an AR-15 the way you have not. We have seen this weapon of war mow down people we know and love the way you have not. How dare you tell us we don't know what we're talking about. Our message is at this point uh, for the politicians, if you aren't with us, you're against us. They plan to have another rally tomorrow to put the pressure on the state legislator to consider more gun control laws. Students are also calling for anti-gun violence demonstrations in Washington and other cities March 24th. Dozens of teenagers gathered in a protest they organized themselves in front of the White House for gun reform. Seventeen teens lay down in front of the president's house for three minutes, representing the time it took the Florida gunman to kill 17 students in the Florida high school shooting last week. The Lyon protest took place on President's Day to demand elected officials change gun laws. Protesters say they want lawmakers to pass these laws to prevent shootings on school campuses in the future. Students say they don't feel safe in their schools anymore. Students from Parkland, Florida are planning a march next month on Washington. A new poll shows that a lot of Americans support the students. Maddor News reporter Leonard Tesher is in the newsroom with more details. According to a new poll in the Washington Post, 58% of respondents say stricter gun control laws could have prevented the Florida shooting. A staggering 77% say better mental health care could have prevented, this, prevented it. Some CSUN students say they think stronger gun control needs to be put in place. Everything it has its pros and cons because you never know who has them for the right intentions and who, you know, doesn't, you know, do it for the right reasons. So it's kind of hard for me to say. But for me personally, I really wouldn't carry a gun because I just kind of feel like that the thought of it kind of just traumatizes me. I think Donald Trump has a lot of thinking to do. He, you know, 17 people died. Stu students that, you know, probably were going to be like us, you know, trying to go to college, you know, and now they don't have the opportunity. And I think he has to think about that. Gun control should be stopped. Because I know, of course, Second Amendment, like, this, 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 but, like, no, no, no. Because, like, it started to, to affect many, many people. Uh, gun, guns are very dangerous to hold, especially for those that, for that, that have, have no control of controlling their problems, especially mental, m mentally. But, like, honestly, like, gun control has to be stopped. Uh, it's it dangerous a lot of lives around this country and around the world. And guns have to be, gun control has to be stopped. Opinions have slightly changed since 2015, with more people blaming it on the lack of adequate gun control laws. Now let's go back to Daria in the studio. Acupuncture may be better at helping patients struggling with pain than opioids. And recent government surveys show an increase in the use of Eastern medicine technique. Within the last decade, nearly 30% more U.S. adults are receiving acupuncture. Acupuncture involves inserting thin needles into specific points around the body. Military and veterans medical facilities have been offering acupuncture for several years. Medicaid programs in states affected by opioid overdoses have started providing, in, providing it for low-income patients. Freezing temperatures are raising concerns for farmers in the Central Valley. Almond farmers are feeling pessimistic about their crops because the harsh weather is threatening to kill their product. Almonds are a popular crop with more than $102 million worth harvested in 2016. Dale Van Gronigan says farmers are taking drastic measures by watering their crops to protect them. Moisture in the air helps protect the blossoms, causes 
ice to form around the blossom, which causes the blossom not to get any colder than 32. So that's that's a safe area right now at this time. Meanwhile, there has been minimal rain this year. Members of the State Water Resource Control Board are set to vote today to make the temporary water ban permanent. Now here's Nick Logan with sports. Thanks, Daria. Major League Baseball's new rule will limit teams to six mound visits per game. The rule should help speed up the game. Last season, MLB's average time of a nine-inning game was a record three hours and five minutes. Teams will get an additional one mound visit per extra inning played. A mound visit is defined as any time a player or coach talks to the pitcher without a pitching change. Players and coaches say that sign stealing and injuries could be a result of this new rule. NCAA says Louisville's men's basketball team must vacate their 2013 NCAA championship title and 123 wins from 2011 to 2015. The university's president, Gregory Postel, says he disagrees with the NCAA decision. We believe the NCAA is simply wrong to have made this decision. The pain this decision has created for our fans and our players who were not involved in the events in question is perhaps the most regretful result of this determination. Louisville must also pay a fine and pay back money they received from their 2012 to 2015 tournament appearances. The punishment comes after Louisville basketball staffer Andre McGee paid women to have sex and dance for players and recruits. It's the first time in history that a modern Division I men's basketball team championship was vacated. Now let's go back to Rico for the latest on entertainment news. Thanks, Nick. Fergie opens up about her national anthem performance, the one that caused NBA All-Star players to laugh. For the rivers we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glass, the bombs burn. Fergie and her team believes nothing was wrong with her performance, but critics thought otherwise. Mocking her on social media, Fergie says she's always been honored and proud to perform the national anthem. But clearly, this redemption didn't strike the intended tone. She says she loves the country, and she's honestly tried her best. Rapper Drake, in his new video, God's Plan, gives away nearly $1 million to the Miami community. Throughout the video, Drake can be seen giving away money for student scholarships, groceries, youth centers, the Miami Fire Department, and the University of Miami's music program. In addition to the significant donations, he donates new cars to Miami families and hands out stacks of cash to a few mothers and their children, telling them, we're nothing without our mothers, so thank you. Drake had nearly a million dollar budget for his latest video, God's Plan, so he gave it away. Some $30,000 in groceries, $50,000 to a college student for tuition, and more to people all over Miami. On Instagram, Drake called it the most important thing he's ever done in his career. From God's plan to the number one movie this past weekend, let's go to Matador News reporter Aaron Peoples in the newsroom for the latest on the Black Panther. Black Panther hit the largest opening weekend ever directed by a non-white person. The predominantly black production had the highest opening ever for a film in February. CSUN Cinema and, arts, uh, and Television Arts Professor Francis Gatewood authored the book The Black of the Ink, a book about the impact of black comic book characters. The professor is also organizing a conference on March 10th called, uh, called Comics and Visual Culture and says the cultural impact of, uh, surrounding the movie um, has huge implications. Here. Culturally, it's going to have a big impact as well. Um, a lot of children are responding well because they've never seen a black superhero to that level before. And so people were excited about that. They're excited about now what they call the best Disney princess now because they talk about uh, the Black Panther's younger sister and how she functions within the film. Um, certainly for black women, it's important because it throws out that whole aesthetic about standards of beauty being measured against whiteness because it features mostly dark-skinned women. The movie has garnered a diverse and, and incredibly vast audience. 
a couple of students on, on campus gave their thoughts on the record-breaking film. I think it's really a very nice movie, and um, I like the perception, and um, perception is starting to change right now, you know? A lot of people seeing the movie trying to see very good things in Africa, that, oh, Africa could be like this and stuff like that. Though even if it's science fiction, but we know that, you know, there's still something there out there, you know, trying to portray and also. It's a very nice movie, Wakanda Forever. <laughs> I think the way it covers like a lot of because Black Panther's always been kind of like a, a racially, uh, racially not motivated, but you know it, it's it's been cover, it's it's always covered like more race topics, and I think the way they covered like how black people are handled not only in Africa but like in America, it was a, was really well done. The movie made two hundred thirty-five million dollars domestically and four hundred four million dollars worldwide. These numbers have many believing the uh, stigma against black movies producing overseas is finally, will finally be broken. And now let's go back to Nick in the studio with news on health. When it comes to preventing heart attacks, a flu shot could be helpful. Experts say having the flu causes your heart rate to go up and the stress the flu puts on your body could lead to a heart attack. One Canadian doctor says the risk of a heart attack is six times greater when having the flu. Experts say people who get a flu vaccine are reducing their chances of a heart attack by 30 percent. A new treatment may be able to prevent allergic reactions to peanuts. A company says a daily capsule of a peanut flour can help children with their peanut allergies. California-based Immune Therapeutics says 67 percent of the kids who had this capsule were able to eat two peanuts at the end of the study. The results have not yet been reviewed by experts, but will be presented at a medical meeting next month. Now. Let's go back to Rico with the latest business report. Thanks, Nix. Albertsons Grocery Stores plans to buy out Rite Aid pharmacies. This will result in almost 5,000 store locations in over 38 states across America. Consumers can now enjoy groceries and pharmaceuticals all in one place, similar to shopping at Target. This will add to the competition of other business buyouts in the grocery industry, such as Amazon's buyout of Whole Foods. KFC closes more than half of its UK restaurants due to shortage of chicken. The shortage of chicken, which was blamed on delivery issues, has forced KFC to close more than half of its 900 British restaurants, leaving local customers mad. KFC and their new delivering company, DHL, are working hard to rustle up more chicken. Each day, more deliveries are being made. However, we expect restaurants to be closed for the remainder of the week. And now, let's go back to Daria with today's weather. Thanks, Rico. It's cold in sunny Southern California today. In Northridge, we're seeing a high of 60 degrees this afternoon. But tonight, there will be another chill, with temperatures dipping into the low 30s. For the rest of the week, the freezing temperatures continue. So stay warm. A cougar seems to be looking for love in Wisconsin. A Brookfield homeowner posted a video of the cougar looking into a window. State wildlife officials say the cougar was likely looking for a new mate. Officials say the cougar left its pack in the South Dakota and crossed state borders to find its soulmate. Homeowner Dan Goet said it's awesome he got it on camera. Officials are hoping to find the cougar and will decide what to do from that point. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Thomas Dasus. I'm Daria Hariri. I'm Nick Logan. And I'm Rico Bruce.